Hi everybody, I'm Sarah Dewar and I'm here today with Bianca Woods from the eLearning Guild to talk about writing proposals. I know it's a little bit scary if you've never done it before, so we're going to walk you through it. Hi Bianca. Hi Sarah, great to talk to you today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Bianca, maybe a bit of your background? So I currently work for the eLearning Guild on the programming team and one of the big parts of my role is evaluating the conference proposals that come in and choosing the ones that we're going to use to build out the program. But before I started working for the eLearning Guild, I did a lot of conference speaking myself, still do actually. And, you know, so I've written a lot of proposals on my own time. And so what I'm hoping to do today is use both sides of that experience to give you some tips about what can make a successful conference proposal and how you can get started thinking about it. Thanks, Bianca. I'm really looking forward to hear what you have to say today. And for the audience, just so you know, Bianca is working for the eLearning Guild, but this applies to any presentation that you might be doing. Now for today's housekeeping, above us, we're going to have the questions and then below us, we might have some little comments. And Bianca and I will switch back and forth. So hang on and here we go with the first section. Over to you, Bianca. You know, I feel like deciding if you're ready to present is honestly one of the biggest hurdles to actually speaking. I've talked to a lot of people who have never presented at a conference before, and so often I hear people say, well, I don't know that I have anything unique to share. And, you know, when I talk to them more, rarely is this the case. Uh, really take a critical, honest look at the skills you have and the experiences you've had. And, you know, be kind to yourself. Really be thoughtful of have people all really have these experiences because there's definitely going to be things that initially you assume everyone knows that when you look into it you look at conference speakers you talk to other people in the industry and it turns out no this is a unique skill or a unique experience that you have that you should share one thing i think it's an easy place to start if you're not sure what your first presentation topic should be about is think about a case study because it's something that's happened to you, it's really easy to build a narrative, which is an easy way to present. And there are so many instances in our field where you can share a story about what you learned from experiences, both the, the pros and cons of it, that other people can learn from. And also, remember that it, it's okay to be nervous about this. Uh, you don't just suddenly magically stop being nervous about speaking and I'll be honest a lot of experienced speakers myself included still feel nervous about doing this about you know presenting and proposing it's you know it's really putting yourself out there and being nervous doesn't mean that you're not ready you just kind of have to push through it and try anyway thanks Bianca that's really good advice now can you tell us a little bit about deciding on what to present, like what you think people might want to hear about? Yeah, so when you're starting to think about what you want to propose on in the first place, I've got a, a few things to keep in mind. First, you want to make sure you have a unique story to tell. Uh, so avoid generic ideas and make it clear in your proposal what's special about your take on the topic. In a lot of cases, multiple people will propose on the same topic. So if you have a unique angle, or a new angle that will help you stand out from the pack. Next, you want to be really clear about what your story is for your proposal and your presentation. Because uh, remember that when we're reviewing proposals, we only have what's written in the proposal to go on. And what can sometimes be really sad for me as a reviewer is I'll see a nugget of a really good idea, but they don't give me a lot of detail about what the, the actual presentation will be. And so unfortunately, that means I end up rejecting it. And even though I saw what might be a good idea, I don't know for sure what they're gonna bring. And so I can't accept it. Finally, you know, you don't usually have to put all your eggs in one basket with these proposals. Uh, for most conferences, you can submit more than one proposal. And in cases like this, it can be helpful to do so. Uh, particularly if you find you've proposed a topic that's incredibly popular, having another proposal in the mix on a different topic can give you another shot at being on the program. That's really good advice. After all, it doesn't cost anything to submit a proposal, so why not submit two or even three? But remember, make sure it's something you feel strongly about and you really want to share with other people. Now, 
What about actually writing the proposal, Bianca? Do you have any tips to share with us on that? So when you actually get to the point where you're ready to write the proposal, here are a few tips that I think can really help. First, you want to make sure that you're writing specifically for the event you're proposing for. Um, all of the, the conferences that I've been to are, are, are pretty different. And so a proposal that might be accepted at one conference might not be as good a fit for another. So you can either take an existing proposal and revise it or potentially look at the conference and go, oh, well, this thing that I proposed for something else, it really doesn't work here. And a good way to do that is to take a look at the program from previous um, years of that event and get a sense of what they have on the program and what they don't. Next, and this is one that is really important to me when I'm reviewing proposals, is really think about what the audience is going to get out of coming to your session. Because they're going to be the people who we as conference programmers are trying to make happy with the sessions. So if I read a proposal and it's all about the speaker, it doesn't feel as great for the event as a proposal where the person writing it has written very, very clearly uh, why an attendee would want to come to the session and what they're going to walk away knowing afterwards. Now, another thing you can do is, I alluded to this earlier, look at past events and read the conference sessions that have been at past events. Because essentially what you're doing is you're reading a version of the proposals that were accepted. And that can help you figure out how to frame things, how to uh, express yourself in a way that's probably going to catch the eye of the proposal reviewers. This is something that I did my very first time writing a proposal and I, I lucked out that it was a good habit to build. Uh, if you have the opportunity, draft out your proposal not in the proposal form. If it's an online form, draft it out in Word or on paper, print it out, um, because that gives you some time to look at it separately and really evaluate each one of the questions and potentially put it down, think about it for a while, and then come back to it, which is a fantastic habit to have. Also, if you have a chance, I really recommend having someone else read your proposal before you submit it. Because what they can do is, I mean, they can do the checking for, for spelling errors or grammar errors, but where they'll be even more helpful is potentially catching things where they'll say, hey, that sentence there or that your, your paragraph or the thing you're saying here, it's not that clear to me. So they can catch the things that in your head, you know what they mean, but might not mean as much to someone who isn't you and is just reading this proposal. This is awesome information. I've presented before and I'm learning a lot as we're recording this podcast. So thank you so much for sharing. Now, are there any final suggestions or tips you want to share for us, Bianca? Yeah, there's, there's a couple other things I would recommend people try it as well. First, it doesn't hurt to be known as someone who regularly shares about a topic before you propose a session on it. And, and you know, whether that's blogging, vlogging, uh, curating content, uh, initiating in discussions on Twitter or LinkedIn or things like that, uh, it can do a lot to help you build your credibility. And there's definitely been instances where I reviewed a proposal and it was kind of on the fence. And then I looked at the speaker and went, oh yeah, I've seen them talk about this online or I've had a conversation with them in the past and they really know their stuff and that can help me bump it up a little bit to a yes. Another thing to think about is, you know, it, it's okay to ask for help. If you happen to know anyone who's spoken at a conference before, talk to them about how they wrote their proposal, get their tips. You can also sometimes reach out to conference organizers and, and find out if they have tips to share or can even have a quick chat with you about your proposal idea. And finally, let's say you propose and it doesn't get accepted. I think it's important to remember that it doesn't necessarily mean you didn't have a good idea. I think there's a lot of factors that go into choosing sessions. Sometimes it's an amazing proposal and there were just more proposals we wanted to say yes to than we had space for. Or sometimes you're most of the way there with an the idea and it just needs a little bit of polish. So if at first you don't succeed, learn from the experience and keep trying. Perfect. Thanks so much for taking the time, Bianca, and hope you have a good day. I'm glad we were able to chat about this today.